Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all well. Today I'm bringing you this sponsored makeup transformation inspired by the Cranks from the Mage Runner series to celebrate the release of the final installment of the trilogy, Mage Runner The Death Cure, which is out on digital download now, and Blu-ray and DVD on May 28th. So I started by roughly planning out where I wanted the main shapes to be on my face cast and I actually have a layer of wood glue over my face cast so using a whiteboard pen for this step is really useful because I can just wipe away and redo it if I need to. I'm not very good at drawing on paper so I often don't get to plan my looks at all whereas this way I get to visualise it on my actual face. Um, so discovering that I can do this has been really useful. For the character design itself, I pulled inspiration from the website of the character and concept designer from the films. Mostly it was the Lawrence design that interested me the most, so there's definitely lots of those elements in my look. But I just chose which parts of the designs I liked the best and I pulled them all together. So I threw down a couple of layers of liquid latex and covered the eye with cotton wool to begin with. When you do this, you want to make sure that you get a few layers down and fully saturate the cotton wool so that when you wear this and your eye is up against it on the inside, you don't get loads of fluff in your eyeball. Been there, done that, never again, it's horrible. If you're going to be building this look up on your face, you would want to cover the eye up slightly differently, so I will leave a link to another video showing you how to do that. On this side of the face, the eye is closed. I really liked the idea of one side of the face being affected more by the virus and the other side just showing signs. So after getting the shape I wanted, I dried the top layer with a hair dryer. And when the top layer is kind of dry like this, you can actually wrinkle it up with your nail or a tool or whatever. And it genuinely looks like a little wrinkled eyelid. I'm also raising the features up around the eyes and the nose to give the illusion that the eyes are nice and sunken in and there's been dramatic weight loss and illness. For the nose, I decided to keep the tip of the nose as part of the design so I didn't have to edit it out or anything later on. So on this side, you can see that the vines or the growths are coming from the mouth and sitting underneath the skin and not quite breaking through yet. Then later on I'm going to add a little sprout to the forehead, like it's made its way up under the skin and then that's where it decided to come out. So for the teeth to not sit really far in front of the face like they would if I just stuck them on my bottom lip, I had to move the position of the lip down a little. So I also took this opportunity to do something a little fun with the chin and the jaw and kind of have the jaw kind of slack and angle it off to the right by adding more cotton wool on one side. And weirdly, the chin actually turned out to be one of my favourite bits. So for the growths on the right side of the face, I had some sat underneath the skin like the other side, but I also added these sprouty boys as well. I made the initial shape with foil, and then to attach them, I just used liquid latex again. Liquid latex sticks to itself when it's dry, so I just applied some to the base, waited for both surfaces to dry, and then boom, step, it's easy. I applied more latex and cotton to add texture and also to blend it into what we already have going on on the face. And the kind of texture I went for with this is kind of stringy. The stringy texture of cotton when it's wet, if you don't smooth it out, is perfect for whatever these little sprouts are. They almost look like twigs, I guess. So I tried to get those lines and those grooves in there. There are also these little stumpy ones that look almost like barnacles and I considered doing these with something like an air clay, something like Model Magic and then just sticking them on but I would have had to wait for them to harden overnight and I didn't have that time so I just used the cotton and latex again and just moulded them this way instead. So for the colouring I liked the tones of this design with the um, purplish shadows so I decided to go with that kind of colour palette. I used a mixture of water-based paints and alcohol activated paints. So I started with the alcohol activated paints, first in this purpley bruise colour, and then I stippled some blues in there too. I threw in some veins and capillaries as well, and then over the top I used the water activated paints in beiges and whites for a more pigmented layer, like the skin was sitting over the veins and capillaries. And I just kept doing that until I was happy with it. It was a lot of adding colour, taking colour away, layering colour, hoping for the best. Here I started to add the shading with the purple tint and I was custom mixing colours the whole way through and no two mixes ended up the same really but I was just kind of throwing together browns and dark purples. 
For the grogs, I applied a flat brown paint to begin with, and while that was drying, I added a tint of red to the lips and dabbed most of the color away. I didn't want anything too lively since this is the kind of situation this person's going through, but you needed a little bit of something. Going back to the growths, I added some beige for highlights and then I also kind of wiped away some colour as well and hoped that the yellow latex was underneath where I was removing the colour and not the silver foil and I got lucky. It worked out quite nicely. Then for the teeth, I used a lower set of resin teeth and I love these things. I use them a lot for stuff like this. The only downside is the backs of them are kind of bulky so you do have to file them down a bit and you'll need to use something like a Dremel. I don't think you'd be able to do it by hand. A great alternative is using something like thermoplastic beads and making your own like I did in my Pennywise video, or you can even use fake nails and just cut them down to the size. I've done that in the past as well for things like vampire teeth. Now, I don't think Cranky Boy here would have perfect teeth, so I dirtied them up a bit with some yellow and brown tooth enamels, but the paints I've used so far would also work just fine if you don't want to buy any extra products. So I've already applied a bald cap and some Prose to my skin, um, so I'm just going to go ahead and stick this baby down. I had one ear out and one ear underneath the bald cap on the side where the virus had taken over. I'd intended to add loads more growths over that area, but I actually really liked the shape and the silhouette I already had with them just coming from the face alone, so I didn't really want to mess with it because I was already quite happy with it. So then it's just a case of adding textures and shapes with the cotton and the latex like I did on my face. And the nice thing about this look is you can be messy, you don't need to worry about hiding any edges, you can just repurpose them and include them. While that was drying, I worked on the eyes. To begin with, I added some redness with grease paint directly around the eyes, like around the lash line, and then I'm running a red liner across the waterline as well to make them look super irritated. Then I'm using the purple to enhance the hollowness of the socket, and this did come out a little bit darker than I was expecting, so I also went over the edges with some beige as well, just to kind of dull it down a little. It made it look more like it was part of the skin than just purple sitting on top of skin, you know? I decided I didn't really like the shape I had going on here. The eye socket looked a little bit too big, so I added a little bit more cotton and latex buildup so it would be a little bit smaller and match the other side better. So my actual skin around my eyes was still looking a little bit too smooth for this look. So this time I went in with some wrinkle stipple to try to bring out more lines and add some texture in there. I feel like eyes are very tricky for looks like this where everything else is so rough and decaying or old or whatever and then I have like my young eyes in there. I always feel like it throws the look off a little bit but it worked out quite nicely. I definitely think I'll try it again. So moving on to the neck, one of the standout features of the cranks is the crazy tendons they have there. So again, I use the cotton and the latex to build up those areas. And if you jut your jaw out, you should be able to see or feel where they should go and you can use your actual anatomy as a guide. The colouring here is the same again, so I'm just going to speed through it. I stippled on the purples and the reds some blues and then the stronger beige and white layers on top and this time I also added some darker shades towards the back of the head um, just for the sake of the photos and this neck grossed up real fast I love how it turned out considering I did this whole thing with one eye and that being said I applied the prosthetic on my face first because I was excited and I wanted you to see it I wanted the cool thing to go on first. Really, you should do as much as you can on the rest of your body, the back of your head, for example, before you put this on and impair your vision. Finally, I added the black sludge coming from the mouth, and I actually made this with a mixture of black body paint and lubricant. It's perfect for stuff like this because it keeps that wet look and that shine without just fading off in like half an hour. 
It looks wicked, the texture is perfect for stuff like this. But then that's it. Everything I use in this video will be listed down below along with a purchase link for the movie, so make sure you check that out if you're interested. As always, thank you guys for watching, and I'll speak to you soon.